Hi, it's Bruce McClary from the National Foundation for Credit Counseling once again, here to give you a few tips to help you manage your budget and keep your spending in check, answer some of your personal finance questions. Before we get into today's topic, I just want to make sure that you subscribe. If you haven't done so already, you can get updated every time we have a new video on different personal finance topics. And of course, please like what you see here or share it with your friends if you think it can be helpful for other people. But right now I'm really excited because it's time for everybody to get back out on the road, get back in the air, get back on cruise ships, to get out and travel as the country opens up again and as more and more places open up to travel. And it gives you an opportunity to do something that you may not have done in a while. So travel is on everybody's mind right now. It's a, it's a popular thing to talk about. It's a popular thing to discuss. And all of that pent up demand after a long pandemic and a dreary winter are making it more likely that vacation spots are gonna be jam packed with people as summer approaches and as the pandemic subsides. So bye bye COVID, hello vacation. But before that happens, uh, there are a few things that of course you wanna keep in mind. And the big question is, are you ready to spend on travel? Uh, travel expenses uh, can really eat a hole in your budget. They can run up your credit card debt and they can give you a few headaches that sort of take away from the fun of vacation. And a trip across the country or around the world, it's gonna cost some money. So there are some things you should consider before you put yourself back into circulation. So the first question you wanna ask is how much is that trip gonna cost? Keep in mind, if you're like me and a lot of other people, it's been a while since you've been spending on vacation. So here's a little refresher and a little bit of a reminder. In 2019, it wasn't long ago, Americans spent a total of $792 billion on leisure travel, billion with a B. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, the average American uh, who travels for vacation typically spends about a couple thousand on summer vacation and even more when you total all the travel, uh, leisure travel for the year. Uh, on average, it comes out to about four or 5,000 uh, for the whole year. That's a lot of money. That can put a little bit of a dent in your budget. The good thing for people right now is that most Americans are coming out of the pandemic with more money in their savings, with lower credit card debt, and a little bit more room to spend. So you've got the money in your budget, which is great. However, uh, there are some things that you need to keep in mind if you're going to save the most right now. And going back to what I said before, demand is pent up. A lot of people want to travel right now. What does that mean? That means fewer seats available on airplanes, fewer rooms available on cruise ships. Trains are going to be booked. Hotels are going to be booked. Vacation rentals are going to be nearly impossible to find. Even campsites right now are overbooked throughout the summer months. So what does that do to the cost? Well, it drives the cost up. So this makes it even more important to use every single tool in the box to try to get a little bit of extra savings as you're shopping around. Be patient, don't jump at the first deal you see, and think about ways you can take the edge off of the increased prices, uh, like cashing in on some of your credit card reward points or airline travel rewards. Uh, and, and that can also help combined with finding the lowest prices in the marketplace uh, to take a little bit of the edge off and save some pressure uh, or avoid some pressure on your budget. Also, look out for hidden costs. The cheapest price that you see for that airline seat or that cruise ship may not be telling you the whole story about how much you're gonna spend. Uh, a lot of times these discount airlines that offer $40 airplane seats uh, and these discount cruise ships that offer $300 rooms, they're not telling you the whole story about how much you're gonna spend. And just as an example, if you tack on all the fees and the costs uh, to it, in addition to that cruise ship, let's say you pay $300 for a cruise, well, you have to pay port taxes, you have to pay luggage fees, you have to pay gratuities. Sometimes they work gratuities into your bill. All of these costs total up and it can actually triple the amount that you end up paying in some cases. So be very careful, do the math before you commit to any kind of a deal. Lastly, don't melt the plastic on your on your vacation. A lot of people have room on their credit cards to spend a little bit more because balances are low. 
uh, but you also may have more room in your savings account. So try to balance cash spending with credit spending while you're on vacation and make sure you're also not taking the credit card that has the highest balance on it uh, when you go travel because the higher you run that balance to your closer to your credit limit, it can actually hurt your credit score. You don't want to do that while you're on vacation. So I hope you have a great vacation. I hope you enjoy returning to travel and you hope, hope you do so affordably. If you have questions, of course, you can always use our Ask an Expert feature on nfcc.org. The link is down below in the crawler. Visit nfcc.org because we also have some calculators that are available to help you make some decisions, work out a budget. You can also connect to a nonprofit credit counseling agency for one-on-one -on -one help. Uh, so again, enjoy your return to vacation. Have a great time while you're doing it, and hopefully you'll save a little bit of money. Thanks for joining us, and again, like, subscribe, and share. Come back and uh, check out our next video.